Hey everyone, Aaron Davis from FCP Euro, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your water pump and thermostat and your Audi S3. So what I have in front of me today is the water pump and thermostat assembly, the water pump union that goes into the oil cooler, and also the water pump belt and hardware. And also we have G13 Rova coolant. This one is not pre-mixed, so you're going to have to go to your local grocery store and buy some distilled water. Uh, you're want, you want to make sure that you mix this coolant before you just fill it. Um, we also have other options available here at FCP Euro. We, ha we have G13 Pentosin, or we also have the genuine Audi Volkswagen that actually is 50-50 mix. However, this one's in stock, so we're using this one for the video today. So behind me today, we have a 2016 Audi S3. This DIY also applies to the Audi A3, the Audi TT, or the Audi TTS. We're gonna go ahead and replace the water pump and thermostat. These are prone to failure. Um, Audi and Volkswagen decided to go with a plastic thermostat housing and aluminum water pump. However, the thermostat housing itself is known to leak through the gaskets or over time the plastic actually cracks. And this one is actually electronically monitored um, that actually operates the thermostat to open and close. Now, since it is electronically monitored, when these go, you will see a check engine light come on your car and you're gonna see a fault for cool insufficient flow. When you see that fault, I would go ahead and check on your water pump. Also see if your coolant level is low and also see if there's actually coolant puddled in your driveway. And usually when these leak, you know because there's a huge puddle underneath the vehicle. So the water pump and thermostat is two separate things. However, I would go ahead and replace both of them at the exact same time because once you go ahead in there and replace one thing, the other one will fail right after it. So replacing this all at once with the water pump right here and the thermostat housing right here, just to make sure you only have to do this job once. So now that I explained what's in front of me, now let's check out the tools you're gonna need to do this job. All right, so the tools you're gonna need to replace your water pump and thermostat is a flashlight, a torque wrench, ratchets ranging from quarter inch to three eighths, an extension from a quarter inch to three eighths, T25, T30s, a seven millimeter, pliers, a 90 degree hook pick, a flathead screwdriver, and also a UV coolant system filler. So now that we took a look at the tools you're gonna need to perform this job, let's go to the vehicle and replace the water pump thermostat. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your hood. And since we're working the cooling system, we're gonna go ahead, unscrew the coolant reservoir to let the pressure out. So when we unhook coolant lines, it doesn't explode. Second thing you wanna do is go ahead Move the engine cover. All right, so now we're gonna take this air duct cover off. There's a coolant line that goes across it. You're gonna pull it up. And then there's two T25s, one right here, and there's one right here. This S3 is missing it, so I'm gonna take the one T25 off. Now there's a clip right here. You just pull up and slide it out. And this is the clip. This is where it's located on the, the air box. So now we're gonna go ahead and start removing the intake system. I'm gonna use a seven millimeter to loosen this clamp. This clamp goes to the turbo inlet pipe. Now we're gonna go ahead and loosen this clamp. All right, once I remove the pipe, it's good practice to cover this hole. You don't want any, anything to fall in there while you're working on the car. I'm just taking some rags, just lightly stuffing it in the pipe, nothing crazy. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the air box. On this model, there's this air line right here. You just slightly pull it back. And now there's grommets holding this on. So I just take my left hand, I pull up to release the grommets. And you slide the whole air box out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove this air duct tube. It's held in by two T25s. We're gonna do the first one here and now you'll see these tabs right here are holding it in so it's got to push down and it will release we're gonna go ahead and do the other side push down it will release and now you just slide it out from the back all right so now we're gonna undo the seven millimeter to the throttle body now we're gonna unclip the throttle body I like to push it in hit the tab and then pull it out and just move the harness out of your way. All right, so now I'm gonna use a 90 degree hook pick. I'm gonna put it on the throttle body pipe and just move it around to get some of the dirt and debris out. So when we raise the vehicle, we can slide this pipe out easier from underneath. 
and be careful you don't want to puncture it but let's get all the dirt and debris out hopefully this will slide right out when we're underneath so now that we loosen the throttle body pipe we're going to raise the vehicle and start working underneath the car to get the pipe out so now that we're underneath the vehicle we're going to unbolt a few things and disconnect some sensors so the first sensor you're going to unplug is right here in the charge pipe push in hit the tab then you're going to pull out so now we're going to undo the seven millimeter and now I'm gonna use a 90 degree hook pick around here and then I'm gonna pull this pipe off. Now I have my 90 degree hook pick. So now that I have the pipe loose, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Don't be alarmed. There's a little oil in there. So now I'm gonna unclip the lower radiator hose from this bracket using 90 degree hook pick. And just gently prying up on the teeth. I'm gonna take this coolant hose and slide it out of the bracket. Now with that out of the way, there's a T30 holding this whole charge pipe in. I'm gonna loosen that T30. In the charge pipe, there's one more T30 holding it on. It's right behind this sensor. Now I'm gonna use the pry bar again and just gently pry it and make sure it's fully out, which it is. So now all so now that the sensor's unplugged, all the bolts are loosened, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this charge pipe down. So now I'm gonna pull down. On the hose. There's a harness right here, just where that bottom T30 is, just pull it over it. And you can pull the whole charge pipe hose off. So now we went ahead and lowered the vehicle again. We're going to start disconnecting the electrical connectors found on the intake manifold. So I'm going to use a 90 degree hook pick. I'm just going to take, use this to help me leverage this harness off. Now I'm going to go ahead and unplug both of these connectors. Start with the top one. So the tab's actually underneath. So you're gonna push in, hit the tab, and then pull out. Same thing for the bottom one. Push in, hit the tab. Oh, this one's a little stuck. Pull it out. So now that I have these unplugged, here's a throttle body connector. I'm gonna push it through underneath the throttle body to move the harness out of the way. Here's the harness. I'm just gonna tuck it, make sure it's out of our way. So now we're gonna undo this coolant line clamp, grab a pair of pliers. Wrestle it back and forth. Okay. Now I'm gonna use a 90 degree hook pick and just gently pry back the line. When you do this, coolant might come out, so it's a good habit to have something underneath the vehicle to catch the coolant that comes out. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove this pipe. It's held in by two T30s. Go ahead and loosen the first one. And now we're gonna do the second T30. Once it's unbolted, you can move it from the fan assembly and just push it out of your way. Like such. All right, so now we're gonna unplug the fan assembly. Uh, you'll find the connector has the big red safety tab. You're gonna pull the safety tab, safety tab back. I'm gonna use a 90 degree hook pick to gently pry up on the tab to assist me with unplugging it. This one's really tight. Pull it, disconnect it. And now we can go ahead and wrestle the fan assembly out of the car. So now that we unplugged the fan assembly, we're gonna go ahead and wrestle this out. It's held in by four tabs. I'm gonna use a small pry bar. All right, that one's a little stuck. I'm gonna go over to the other side, see if I can wrestle that one out and then slowly go back and forth to slowly start pulling this up. All right, so this one's stuck too. So I'm gonna use my 90 degree hook pick and I'm going to also use a flathead screwdriver to try to help me out here. All right, I got to pass that point. Now the bottom one just slid right out. 
Now we're gonna go back to the passenger side and try to get that side out. All right, so now we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're gonna push in this tab and pull up on the fan assembly. And now we have the fan assembly loose. So now we're gonna have to wrestle this out. So now that we have the fan assembly loose, I'm gonna pull up, get it off the tabs. And you're basically gonna have to go left and right trying to get the tabs past areas for the radiator. This can be a little challenging, but with the fan assembly out of the car, it makes the job 10 times easier. All right, after wrestling this fan out, we're gonna go ahead, pull it up. Thank you, Hidalgo, for coming over to help me with this. I'm gonna put this away. So now that the fan assembly's out, I'm gonna go ahead and start disconnecting the coolant lines to the water pump. I'm using a 90 degree hook pick, gently prying it up. Now I'm gonna use my hand. Now we're gonna wiggle it. I always push that clip back in. I'm gonna drain the coolant since I'm here. I'm gonna take this line, move it out of my way. All right, now we're gonna do the other coolant line to the water pump with my nine degree hook pick. And now I'm gonna pull it out. So now I'm gonna unbolt the two T30s holding this coolant line on. They're both located on the intake manifold. Now I'm gonna undo the second T30. So now we're gonna undo the coolant line up top with pliers. Now I'm gonna take my nine degree hook pick and slowly walk this coolant line off. And now I'm gonna get this line out of the way to move this pipe. So you're gonna use pliers again. Now, same thing, I'm gonna use my nine degree hook pick, slowly walk that off. Now I'm gonna gently pull the line off and move this coolant line completely out of the way. So now we're gonna go ahead and undo the last coolant line to the water pump, use my nine degree hook pick. All right, now I'm gonna pull that line out. Make sure you put the clip back on because you don't wanna remember that. That would ruin your day. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the four T30s holding the throttle body on and take the last pull out. And we can go ahead and remove the throttle body. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the two T30s holding on the water pump belt cover. There's one up top and the one on the bottom. And please note that the two T30s, the one I'm doing right now on top is a different length than the one on the bottom. So make sure you put the correct T30 where it goes. If, you, if it's easy for you to remember, just put it up to the water pump. The longer one goes in here and the bottom one's a shorter T30. All right, now I'm gonna undo the bottom T30 for the water pump belt cover. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide the cover out. Now I'm gonna use my 90 degree hook pick, slowly walk this belt off. Let's go back and forth. Now we can go ahead, unbolt the water pump and disconnect it. All right, so now I'm gonna loosen the five T30s that hold in the water pump. There's three up top and two in the bottom. All right, we're gonna move to the next one. Now we're gonna do the last one up top. All right, now it's time to loosen the bottom two T30s. Now we're gonna undo the last T30 on the bottom. All right, now that all the bolts are loose, we're gonna disconnect the electrical connector and remove the water pump. So now we're gonna pull the water pump out. Now we're gonna undo the connector. All right there. And now we can go ahead and remove the water pump out of the car. Just have to wrestle it out. If I can get it out. All right, so now that the water pump's removed, as you notice, the union stayed into the oil cooler, so you wanna make sure you take this out. You just pull it out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use a Brillo pad and clean the block where the water pump sits. You wanna make sure there's no debris on this so the gasket seals properly. Now I'm just gonna take a funnel with some water and I'm gonna rinse some of the coolant off the block. All right, now that I rinsed the block with water, I'm gonna go ahead with the rag and just wipe up as much debris as I can. 
So this water pump is driven off a belt off the balance shaft. At Audi, there's a special tool to remove that pulley. Unfortunately, we do not offer it here at FCP Euro. So when you do this job, you're going to want to inspect the belt to see if there's any cracking or if it's ripping. If it is, uh, I would contact your Audi dealer, see if they can rent the tool to you or see if you could purchase it. Um, I went ahead and inspected this belt. I don't see anything that's too concerning. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it when we install the new water pump. Before we go ahead and install the new water pump, the kit includes a new union that goes to the oil cooler to the water pump. Uh, the O-rings on this union, you can lubricate either with coolant or some type of lube. I have lube with me, so I'm going to lube it up and then install it in the water pump. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install the union in the water pump. And this end right here is going to go into the oil cooler. All right, so now I'm going to slide the water pump and the union in. And there's two dowels that the water pump will sit on. And you need to make sure they are flush. I'm going to grab the belt for the water pump and loop it onto the pulley. I line my union up with the hole for the water pump. And go ahead and tighten the T30s by hand to hold the water pump in place while you can get ready to torque it. So now I'm going to go ahead and torque the five T30s to nine newton meters for the water pump. Okay, you're going to want to go in a star pattern. So I'm going to do the bottom right one next. Okay, now I'm going to go to the middle T30 up top. Now I'm going to do the bottom left T30. And now we're going to do the last one that's the up top right, right above the water pump belt. Now we're going to go ahead and install the water pump belt cover. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the water pump belt cover. Now I'm going to install the bottom T30 for the cover. All right, so now the water pump's installed and torqued. We're going to go ahead and plug the connector back in. And now we can go ahead and start plugging in the coolant lines. All right, so now we're going to plug in the lower water pump hose. I'm going to clip it in. Now you want to plug in the middle hose. Now we're going to plug in the upper hose. So now we're going to go ahead and install the connectors. This car usually has a bracket that holds them in place right here, but the car is missing them. Now we're going to go ahead and install the throttle body. It's held in by four T30s. Now I'm going to install the first T30 just to hold my throttle body in place so it doesn't drop on me. I go to install the others. Here I want to install these all by hand. All these bolts are hand tight. It's going into plastic, so be very careful. So now we're going to go ahead and install the fan assembly back into the car. All right, once I have the fan assembly in place, we can go ahead and push down on it. We're going to snap it into the tabs that we used to pry it out earlier. So now we can go ahead and plug the fan assembly back in like that. All right, so now we're going to install the charge pipe. This is the pipe that goes all the way to the throttle body and then to your intercoolers down here. And also has that sensor that we unplugged. I'm going to go ahead and lower the car and then I can slide that pipe on easily. And then we'll come back down here and tighten everything up. All right, so I almost have the throttle body pipe on, but I'm going to mess with it a little bit more so I can have it seat fully. I'm going to feel around the edges to see if it's folded over, which it's not. OK. Now the throttle body is on. I'm going to go ahead and tighten the 7 millimeter. And I always just do a test. Pull on it a little bit to make sure it doesn't slide off. Now we're going to raise the vehicle back up. We're going to plug in a sensor and tighten two bolts. So now I'm going to go ahead and slide back, slide back the intercooler hose back to the charge pipe. Now I'm going to tighten the seven millimeter and just for a quick test, always pull on it. Make sure when, before you go and drive, it doesn't fall off. Now I'm going to install the T30. It's right behind this map sensor. Before I fully tighten it, I'm going to go ahead and start the other T30. Okay, that's tight by hand. I'm going to go back to the other T30. Now we can fully tighten it by hand. All right, now I'm going to plug back in the map sensor. Now I'm going to put the coolant line back into the bracket. So now I'm going to install this coolant line. It goes right underneath the throttle body. All right, so now I'm going to use these clamp pliers. Pinch it so it holds. Go ahead. Make sure the throttle body cable is above it. There 
and go ahead and slide this hose on. I'm gonna use a 90 degree hook pick really quick. I'm gonna hit it with some lube. I'm gonna slide the clamp back up and release it. Now with that installed, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the throttle body. And now I'm gonna install the two T25s that go to the intake manifold and plug in this cool line. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the two T25s. There's one right here in front of the intake manifold. These you tighten by hand. You're going into plastic, so nothing crazy. Now I'm gonna plug in the other T25. That's located right here on the side of the intake manifold. Now we can plug back in the coolant line and then we'll reclamp it. Okay, that's clamped. All right, so now we're gonna install this coolant line. We're gonna plug it in first right here. And now we're gonna go ahead and install both the T30s that hold this bracket on that goes to the fan assembly. I'm gonna tighten this one down so I hold it in place and then I'll tighten the other one. Now I'm gonna install the second T30. Make sure they're both hand tight. Nothing crazy going into a plastic housing. Now that this is all buttoned up, we're gonna go ahead and install the intake system. All right, so now I'm gonna install this air duct. You're gonna peel up on that cool line right here, line the tabs, and now install both T25s on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna take this napkin out that we used to plug the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and slide their intake hose onto the air box, like this. And now I'm gonna go ahead and install the air box. Now before I clip this back in, I'm gonna take this air hose. Now I'm gonna push on this, on the dowels. Okay, and slide this back on. Now I'm gonna install this clamp and tighten the seven millimeter back there. So I'm gonna install this clamp. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the seven millimeter. All right, now I'm gonna install this vacuum line right here. I'm gonna push this coolant line back in the grommets. There it's held in. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this cover. All right, so now I'm gonna install the cover. Make sure the clip's in. And then you're gonna tighten the two T25s. Like I said in the beginning, this model only has one, it's missing it. So I'm gonna install the bolt that's here. Now that everything's installed, we're gonna go ahead and vacuum fill the car with coolant. So now that we have the car buttoned up, we're gonna go ahead and fill the car with coolant. This Rover that I'm using, the G13, is not pre-mixed, so I have to mix it with distilled water. So I'm gonna pour half of this into this bucket Make sure the bucket that you're using is clean. You don't want any dirt and debris going into your cooling system. I'm gonna pour half of the distilled water in here. All right, now we're gonna use our U-View. Uh, it's a vacuum filling system used with the air compressor. We're gonna fill the car coolant. Now I'm gonna fill the line into the bucket coolant we have, and I'm gonna open the valve. All right, so my bucket is running low. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up some more, and then just open the valve again. So now I'm gonna take the U-View out, and I'm gonna cap the coolant reservoir. So that's how you replace your water puppet thermostat on the Audi S3. This is also applicable to the Audi A3, the TT or the TTS with a 1.8 or 2 liter turbocharged engine. Thank you for watching. Um, a quick tip for you when you're doing this video that I found when doing the water pump, I actually would slide the water pump belt on the pulley itself and then plug in the union. It allowed the alignment for the water pump to go on the block a lot smoother. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. And thank you for watching.